Hey everybody, welcome to this month's Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the Application Specialist for the Steel Segment here at Trimble. And uh, this month I don't really have a focused topic for you. This is more just generalized tips. Um, so hopefully these will be uh, helpful to some of you out there. Uh, so in no particular order, uh, one of the first things that I usually change on a new installation of Tecla is my rotation center. So I, I see a lot of people, especially new users, struggling with this. When you rotate in Tecla, you hold down the control key and pan at the same time, and you do have your standard kind of rotation center in the middle. Now the default settings, at least in the US environment, are if you want to change the rotation center, you would have to either find the command up here in your menus, or you can simply type the letter V, which changes uh, the cursor, and now you can click on a new location, and now the model will rotate around that point. So that's the default setting, but I find that, uh, like I said, especially new users seem to get uh, lost with that, or they seem to struggle with that a little bit. Um, so one of the first things that I like to do, and I think it's a little bit faster to navigate, is to come to your file menu, go to settings, and enable the option for automatic rotation center. Uh, when you check that option on, now you can simply point your cursor at the new rotation point and start to rotate. Hold down the control key and pan, and you can see that the rotation point automatically jumps to wherever my cursor is aiming. So I think that for a lot of people, again, especially newer users, that's a lot faster and a lot easier to understand. You simply point where you want to rotate. Um, one th tip though on that is you want to make sure you're aiming at something. You want to aim at a physical object for best results. If you do aim off in kind of gray space, it can be a little weird sometimes for where the rotation is going to be. So that one's actually working really well. It's, it's ending up down at the foundation. But um, so there, there's a good example. So when you're not aiming at something, your rotation point may, may end off, you know, uh, 100 feet off in space or something like that. So make sure you just aim at something when you rotate if you decide to use this setting, okay? So um, next in my, uh, my tips, and, and this is again, this is a setting that I like to set up in my models and on my computer, I actually put these in a firm folder, is setting up temporary view properties. So I use temporary views a lot, where I'm gonna be cutting something, maybe not along a grid line, uh, maybe along the center of a member, center of a stair, something like that for my modeling purposes. So for your view properties, you can go ahead and load like an elevation view and, and then modify the name and modify the settings. Um, I like to go ahead and save these with a name called temp. And I'll literally save this as temp so that um, now I can reuse this very quickly later on. Um, when I save it with the parentheses around the name, that makes sure that it's not going to get added to my view list. Okay, so if any any name that has parentheses will not get added to the view list. Hopefully, um, most of you out there know that. So now, if I go ahead and I start cutting views, like let's say I cut a view along this beam, and uh, I'm going to cut a view along this uh, plane right here in the middle of nowhere. You know, you can go ahead and cut a whole bunch of views on here. All of these, that one's cut a little bit crooked. Um, all of these have the name temp, so you can see there's a temp, there's a temp, there's a temp, um, but they're not going to get added to my view list. So this is kind of like a, a double tip. Parentheses around the name so that it doesn't get added to my view list, and saving those properties away so that I don't have to you know, constantly be typing in the name. I can go from making a new plan view and then simply load back to temp, and then I have that setting there for me. So again, that's something that I do on basically every install of Tecla that I do um, on my personal machine here because I end up using this command a lot. Um, so uh, my next kind of tip, something that I see, uh, I see people doing a lot by accident actually, which is kind of funny and they don't really realize what they're seeing. Um, what happens is they'll be looking at their models or they'll open up a model and then all of a sudden they have a red grid. Why is the grid red? Um, and typically that's because this option down here has gotten flipped from view plane to work plane. And when you see there, the grid is now showing up red. Um, there's not necessarily anything wrong with it, but people are wondering what is going on. Well, basically, that's uh, considered a snap plane. And it's showing my grids when, um, when it's set to view plane. It's showing it 
kind of associated to whatever the view really is is being created at. So if my view, like my 3D view here is set up at zero, my grid shows up black. If I were to open up a view at a different plane, um, like let's say my 31 foot five and a half that I have here, my grid again is black. So it's showing the grid in relation to the current view plane. Um, when it's set to work plane, it's actually following not necessarily where the view is created, but it's following the current work plane or the current coordinate system. So um, by default, my coordinate system is down here at the global origin. But one really cool thing about this feature that I think is underutilized is if your work plane does change, like let's say that I use this three points and I, I don't really have a good uh, example in this model. So I'm just going to randomize here and pick uh, some points here, maybe just to the, the top of this um, this beam here. So you can see that my work plane has changed. You can see the, the coordinate icon there. But also notice that, hopefully you can see that, it's actually showing me the grid in red associated with the current work plane. So this is great for being able to find where grids cross certain planes, and, and especially when you're dealing with sloping, skewed hip and valley type work so you can see that it's showing me you know where does grid line a project up and actually connect with my 16 foot five and a half elevation um, where does that grid then intersect with my 31 foot five and a half elevation so there's a lot of really cool applications for that again for like sloping and hip and valley type work that's a snappable grid line and it's only visible because I have this current work plane option chosen down here Again, if you see it down at the global level, it's because um, your current work plane happens to also be down there, but that's just kind of a, a double kind of tip, how to, uh, heads up to something that you might be seeing here in your model. Now, something else um, kind of based on that same line of thinking as far as talking about work planes is I don't think that there are enough people currently saving their work planes away. Now, this wasn't even possible until a couple years ago without the use of some sort of extension or add-on, um, but this is now a new toolbar that's been added in the last couple of years where we can actually set up a work plane. So let me go ahead and change my work plane here um, along the skewed section of my building. Um, you know, that's a work plane that I may want to come back to for making my columns automatically be rotated, whatever angle of degrees that is. And, and when I change that, when I change that work plane, you can see that down here it went to saying unnamed. So it's recognizing that I don't currently have a name for this particular work plane. But if I click on the plus sign, um, I can save this with a name. So I'll call this like building two and I'll click the little plus sign and now I've got that grid plane saved away. And if I want to go back to the global plane or the, the origin, you can see that there's model origin in this dropdown. And that changes my work plane back here to the little uh, global XYZ. Um, or if I want to switch back, I can just hit that dropdown and go to building two. And now it's over here on building two. So that's kind of, you know, another little tip if you haven't seen that yet. Like I said, it's been added in the last couple versions. I would be constantly saving those things away um, so that I can flip between, again, skewed parts of buildings, sloping stuff, hip and valley, stair systems, uh, lots of useful applications there uh, for that particular little function. Um, something else that's been added in the last few years is the ability to go back to things that you have previously selected. So um, what I mean by that is, you know, maybe this has only happened to me because I tend to move quickly in the model, but there's times when you're zoomed in and you're selecting things. You know, you'll be coming in here, you're picking, you're picking, then you're panning, then you're picking, picking, maybe you're rotating while you're picking, and maybe one of those times when you're selecting multiple objects, you accidentally forget to hold the control key down and you let go of all those things. And then you sit there and you kind of grit your teeth because you've accidentally dropped all the stuff you were selecting. Well, if you hold down the Alt key and press the letter P, that's going to bring back your previously selected object. So it's just a nice little trick there for when you're going and picking, picking, picking. Oops! You know, you can just hit Alt P and it's going to go ahead and re-grab those parts so that you can again go back to holding control and continuing uh, to add to your selection. So just one of those little handy things that I think you know happens to everybody from time to time, especially if you're moving quickly and jumping around a lot, uh, you may accidentally let go of some pieces. So um, Alt P to grab those previous things.
All right, so um, I think that's going to do it for today. I just wanted to do a quick little set of tips. Um, like I said, not really focused on any particular topic this month. Um, hopefully, again, you know, even for the, the experienced users, maybe one or two of those uh, will be new to you. Um, go ahead and leave any comments uh, below, any suggestions, anything you want to see, anything you want to learn, some better ways on how to do them. Um, as always, thank you for watching, uh, and we'll see you next month.